We're back in the Emerald Dreamway, which means one thing. That means it's time for a new Feraldrude PB guide. This time, we're making one for Convoke Feraldrude in Dragonflight. So, as you guys probably know, Convoke was pretty awesome back in Shadowlands. But it got nerfed quite hard when Dragonflight first came out. Most of those nerfs were uh, reverted quite recently. And Convoke's kind of back now. It's kind of gone a bit under the radar, but it's actually very good, especially in 2v2 Arena. So, so in today's video, we'll make a guide showing how to one-shot with Convoke in the current patch. The talents you want to play, Honor Talents, Gear, Crafted Items, Tear Set, everything you need to know to truly perform with Convoke in the current patch. But also any patch in Dragonfly is going to be a very general guide that should help you in, in this current patch, but also in the upcoming patches of this expansion. Let's dive into it. Hope you enjoy. Alright, so start off with the build we play for Convoke in Dragonfly PP. There's only one build that I use for this. It kind of makes it more simple. Um, but yeah, one kind of key thing to notice before we dive into the details is that Convoke is quite different in a way now than it was in Shadowlands. In a very good way. And that is that Convoke is not the be-all, end-all. Back, back, back in Shadowlands, you would Convoke. If you didn't kill the Convoke, you had to kite for a minute and just wait for a Convoke to come off CD. Now it's a bit different. You can have Convoke. You can have your Frenzy beat the combination. We have Wild Attunement, which is massive. We're going to touch on that a bit more later in the video. But yeah, basically... But uh, between convokes, you can still do a good amount of damage, which feels quite good. So you can actually force trinkets outside convoke and then get convoke off CD and then kill, for example. But yeah, let's kind of just go over the most important parts of the build. Not going to go through everything as is quite standard. But we do have Cyclone. Keep that in mind. We have uh, Heart of the Wild. We have double well Wild Instincts. We're not getting Thick Hide and Iron Fur and stuff like this. So we're a little bit more on, on the squishy side with this build. You could skip Cyclone and, and grab that, but I don't really recommend that. I think Cyclone is great for setting up the Convokes. So this is the Druid side, fairly standard with Clone. Now, on to the side with Convoke. So what we're kind of skipping to, to, to get Convoke away from the normal Feral build is that we're not getting uh, Swarm and we're not really getting Circle of Life and Death either. So those are like the, the key differences really. Overall, the build is very similar to what you would play in like a normal single target build. Uh, but of course we do have Convoke. And we also have Ash Mace Guidance. Which makes Convoke a 1 minute cooldown. So. One question I get about this build is like why. You okay actually first. Let's go into Taste for Blood before we touch on that. So Taste for Blood is a very very key thing. For Convoke in this current patch. And pretty much always. And that is that for each bleed that is up on target. Your Convoke Bites will do 5% more damage. Just all your Bites. But yeah, we're kind of focused on the Convoke Bites. So per bleed, 5% more damage. We can have Rip, Rake, Thrash, your Cirque Bleed, and also Frel Friends. You can easily have 5 bleeds up when you're bursting, which is 25% more damage on your Bites. Which, of course, is a bunch, and that helps a lot. So one question I kind of get regarding this talent is why don't we play with Rip and Tear when we Convoke? You can do this, and it's not like a bad idea necessarily. But I do find that... Um, Playing Vein Ripper makes it just kind of more reliable to get bleeds up before Convoke go. Uh, but if you would like really want to min-max damage on Convoke, you could apply a rip and then instantly Convoke. But I find um, applying a rip, getting comp points, and then stunning, and then Convoking just kind of makes it way, way too clunky. As Convoke is all about timing. And you kind of got just got to be ready when that moment comes. And I find uh, Vein Ripper is way better for that. So, that's why I go this pretty much always. We also have double Carnivorous Instincts, which gives us 12% more damage on Fury, which also, of course, is 12% more damage on our Convoke. And we also have Dire Fixation, a new talent. It's also great for Convoke, because it's like a single target thing, uh, which is 8% more damage on Convoke as well, so you want to keep that up. And, uh, you know, Sabertooth, and yeah. The rest is, like, fairly standard, but kind of keep that in mind. Like, those modifiers. Your Fury, your Dire Fixation, your Bleeds are very important to kind of maximize the damage you Convoke. We're also playing Blood Towns. Blood Towns like, usually will, will just be procced by Convoke itself, which is great. Um, but yeah, so BT also, of course, will help massively on the Bites. Because, like, Bites on their own are decent, but it's, like, with all these, like, modifiers that we can really get those huge crits that will just shock the enemies and easily get, like, 150 gigabyte, bite, even up to 200k uh, in the current patch. So... That is the main build, and now on to the Honor Talents. So for Honor Talents, like I already mentioned, we have Wild Attunement. 
which works with Cyclone. Every time you land a Cyclone, you get a free Frel Frenzy on your next finishing move. Like so. This gives you the opportunity to, to do crazy damage between ghosts, but also setting up ghosts. For example, if I have Convoke ready and I full bleeds on my main target. By the way, these dummies just take crazy damage because they're old dummies, but yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, let's say we have full, full bleeds on my kill targets, but no Frenzy. If I clone the healer and I land my, my Mame now that's going to use Frenzy for me, then I can Fury Convoke. And this Convoke will do the most damage and usually just kill someone pretty much instantly. So, this is why Wild Tournament is great. Because you can get off global Feral Frenzy when you main. You probably want to Fury, by the way, before the main. So the Frenzy is also buffed by Fury. So keep that in mind. Uh, and, and again, that Frenzy will do its own damage, which is very nice. But it will also buff your uh, Bites because of Taste of Blood. So yeah. Wild, uh, Wild Tumen, great talent, gives you a ton of pressure outside of Ghosts, as we're going to touch on more a bit later in the guide when, when it comes to the rotation part. But basically, between Convokes, you can get a ton of pressure by cloning things and getting those free frenzies ramped up. Uh, then we also have Wicked Claws. Great talent, you know, gives us a bunch of healing reduction. Uh, if you're playing, like, with a class that has it already, I guess you don't, you, you don't really need this, but usually... When you're convoking, you're going to be playing with a healer, especially in 2v2. So it's a great talent. Now, for the third talent, I do quite like King of the Jungle. Even if you're just bleeding like one target, 5% more healing received is nice. But you could always go for a more offensive option. For example, Thorns into Melis or even uh, Ferocious Wound. Can be quite nice with a bit of uh, HP reduction, even though it's nothing too crazy. Uh, but it can be quite nice. So yeah, that, that's the Arn Talents. Um... Not really much variation here. High winds got nerfed recently. It's not really that good anymore. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much just like that. If you like really, really need the tankiness, you could just go for strength or wild. Uh, makes your bear form a bit more strong. And you could swap out King of the Jungle for that. Um, but that is our talents. Now let's go into the uh, opener, rotation, and the actual convoke part of the guide. Okay, so now for the part that everyone wants to see is the rotation and opener, all that stuff. So, when you're going to open with Convoke, there's a few things that I keep in mind. If I'm doing 2v2 and I'm facing like a Residue Windwalker Monk, I might just want to go in and like just Convoke instantly on the Windwalker, right? Bad idea. The Ardra can just like race on you instantly for stealth, stop your Convoke, you get no, uh, no trinkets, you don't force anything, and you just lose your Convoke, right? So, keep in mind, sometimes you don't want to convoke instantly for yourself. You just want to open up, shred, maybe rake, apply full bleeds. Then, once the healer pops out of, out of stealth, like Archer, for example, uh, you, you're a holy priest. You go chastise him, and then you can finally go and just maim convoke that way. So, yeah, you don't always want to convoke from stealth. But I would say usually you do. So, when you want to convoke from stealth, we're going to go in, press uh, Fury... Cirque and Rake, and then we'll just Convoke. So as you might have like, uh, as you might remember from earlier in the video, that is not optimal for the damage on, on Convoke, as you don't have Rip Up, you don't have Thrash Up, like you, you don't have all your Bleeds Up, basically. You don't have Frenzy Up. But from Stealth, that is the best we can do. We can do Rake and also the Bleed from Cirque. So it looks something like this. Rake with Fury, and then just Convoke. Like so. Then it can Rip, Frenzy, just keep doing damage. Keep on like your convoke is not really all your damage. You can keep doing so many bites with your BTs and with your Cirque. So your damage is not over at all when it convoke or after uh, convoke ends rather. Gonna keep procking Blood Talons, keep biting, and then when Cirque ends, then your pressure will kind of fall off a bit. Then you might be asking like, now what? What do I do? Maintain your bleeds. Like so, you can Fury again, as you need to get two Furies, everyone Convoke, as it's a 30 second cooldown. Just keep procking Blood Talons, and keep biting. You can do like one stun between the two uh, uh, Convokes as well, can't be good to do, might want to clone off that stun. Potentially, if you're dying, because uh, you know, a big part of Convoke is, it, it's still living until the next Convoke. So they, doing a, a, a stun into a clone between can be a great idea. But let's say now. Your Convoke is back, and now you can have full bleeds going before you do the Convoke. 
Now, let's kind of pretend we don't have Frenzy because maybe we use that between the Convoke to, uh, to, to maybe force Trinkets, which is great to do. So, yeah, we have no Frenzy, but we have Convoke, we have Fury. Now, m what you might want to do is, for example, root the Warrior. Maybe it's a Warrior. You might walk over, you might just like rake, stun the healer, clone the healer, then the, you jump in, fury, maim, convoke. Now you're free frenzy from the from the maim, and this bite, those bites, and that convoke will do so much pressure. So many games with convoke, even even on very high MR, I win by doing exactly that. Of course, in arena, they're gonna try to stop you from 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 cloning and all that, so you kinda gotta you gotta set it up better. Uh, maybe bait some kicks out the way first, fake cast some clones, potentially. Uh, or just like root them. Uh, there's a ton of ways to do it. If you have a pre-stern team, uh, pre team, they, they can fare them in, into the go. Uh, it's going to help set it up. There's a bunch of ways to, to go about it. Uh, but that's like the general gist. It's just getting that clone on the healer. Or even on a pet. Just get that free frenzy. And maybe your priest can fare the healer. Or chastise the healer. And then maiming with that free frenzy. And it's going to do so, so much damage. So let me just like, try to show that again real quick here. This time, with Cirque, as that's going to come up at some point as well. And the ghosts are so consistent, right? Every minute, you have Convoke. Every 45, you have Frenzy. Every Cyclone, you have Frenzy. And then Cirque as well. So, I kind of want to uh, get you guys in the mindset that Convoke is not, like, all your damage. You have the Convoke, which is a ton of damage, but you can also Cirque, you can Frenzy, you can Maim. You can do big bites outside the, the Voke as well. With proper BT procs and proper bleed management. So, let's say now we can even do a double frenzy for even more burst. We'll get BT up. We might like Cirque, pre go, and maybe root, root kill target, hard cast corner healer, jump in. We can main, we can actually double frenzy here, which actually does stack and then convoke. And now you have a huge frenzy taken with the bites as well, and that's gonna be even more damage. And then just keep procking BTs, keep biting. It does not stop, right? And, uh... That's, like, pretty much the rotation, guys. So, just kind of to, to summarize. Usually, you're going to just open up. Fury. Cirque. Rake. Convoke. Boom. Optimally, cross the scene, right? Very important, guys. Cross CC. I would say, like, usually you want to play with the, with the Holy Priest. You can play with the Holy Paladin. You can play with pretty much any anything. Red Paladin. Just try to like make sure that with your teammate, you're doing some form of cross CC when you convoke. So, so you're not just going to get windshared, just going to get stunned, whatever it is, right? Make sure you, you're coordinating with your teammates to do a hodge, to do a chassis, to do a fair, to do um, really anything. A, a lasso, if, if they're a shaman, it doesn't really matter. Just get some form of CC on the other target as you're doing your convoke. Even double DPS, it works great. Um, but yes, that's actually... Uh, Basically, the rotation and open and all that. Hopefully, that helped. Now, let's kind of go into the gear and how to optimize your stats and all that. Okay, so now for the gearing, stats, all that good stuff for Convoke for Aldrude. So, let's get into it. So, basically, the biggest difference, I would say, is that we're playing Badge over Insignia. Pretty much like in, in, in all other builds for Aldrude, you want to play this. Well, this one, Obsidian, uh, for the haste, but also for the proc. But with Convoke, Badge is the perfect trinket. One minute cooldown lines up perfectly. And also his crit. And crit's quite nice for Convoke. So crit some bites. Um, but Haste also very good, which we're going to get into here. Uh, but yeah, so just macro those two together. Get that uh, Convoke and Badge together. You press the button. And it's perfect. Every minute, like clockwork, will line up just like that. So yeah, Badge is absolutely huge. I can't really stress that enough. You kind of need Badge if you want your Convokes to really pump. Uh, so yeah, there's that. For the rest, um, so Haste is pretty good, right? We're doing a lot of clones. Cloning between Ghosts, again, to proc Wild Tumments. Cloning to Peel. Cloning to set up Ghosts. Uh, and also Haste in general is quite nice. Uh, so back in Shadlands, Convoke was a bit more crit heavy, but now it's Haste. Has such great value. We're definitely going for quite a bit of haste as well. But I'm just going to kind of go through every single piece. And kind of explain why if it's needed. So we do have uh, a crafted piece on the head. I do play precog. I think it's great. It does depend on the matchup. You can definitely skip this sometimes. And uh, instead go for like the mastery on, on the ring. 
But I would say most time I do play precog when I'm convoking. Just because faking kicks can be great. Not necessarily to like fake kick and then convoke. On paper that seems pretty good. But in reality it's more just kind of faking kicks to line clones to set it up. Um, see so precog quite nice. Verse mastery. Verse mastery. Verse mastery tears the shoulders. We have two set. No four set. It's not very good. Verse mastery cloak. We have haste mastery on the chest. Tear set. You could de like definitely go for tear set on the uh, hand setter. Uh, but I quite like this. Again, I quite like having high haste. Uh, we have verse mastery wrists. We have a haste verse weapon. Badge. Medallion. We have a haste verse ring. And a crit verse ring. You could go for... I mean, I mean and a verse master ring. You could go for a crit verse ring here instead of haste verse. Uh, if you want to kind of get that bit more crit chance. But... I kind of recommend having the haste right there. We have the crit versus boots with again shadow crafted and the proc, main stat proc. We have verse mastery legs, verse mastery waist, and verse mastery hands. And yeah, that is my gear for convoke. Now, I just want to like, do a few kind of general tips when it comes to convoking to finish off the guide. So, again, I kind of touched this earlier, but I need to kind of stress this and that is that convoke is pretty worthless if you're just letting the enemy stop you for free okay so either you seeing or your teammates seeing is vital this is kind of why i recommend like i said earlier whatever you, your class you're playing with usually in truth arena that's where i recommend playing convoke and i actually do think convoke is the best thing for all to play in certain uh scenarios in, in 2v2 where there's like no pets and stuff but just make sure you're getting some form of cross EC, okay? It's so important. I cannot stress that enough. Could be anything. Uh, when you're doing solo setup, again, just root, root the main target maybe. Walk out of line. Throw a bash in there. Maybe clone. You can jump in. Maim. You can convoke. There are many ways to do it. But yeah, so that's just the first thing that I want to stress. Just make sure you do that. Beyond that, again, focus on bleeds. Make sure you have bleed up time in general. That goes for any Feral build. Bleeds is key. Because if I have to run now, if I have full bleeds going, I'm still doing damage. If I'm kiting, but I have no bleeds going, I'm doing zero pressure. Okay? Now, one more tip is how to live between convokes. This also kind of just goes for Feral in general. How to survive. Uh, bear form is huge. If you can pre-bear form stuns, this can help you massively. Um... You know, kiting is actually number one line of uh, your number one line of defense. But yeah, bear form and kind of living and kiting is huge when needed because sometimes you can't really stay in there and just tank damage. You gotta balance, get to a pillar, utilize bear form, and stun the DPS is trying to kill you into a clone. One of the most underrated ways to live that I think low ferals, low uh, low rated ferals don't really do usually is. When you have to live, you just stun, clone the targets, and bounce, right? A great way to live. Okay, guys. So, if you have any questions about this, you can contact my stream or post them in the uh, comment section. And, I, and I'll answer all questions about this. Um, but, yeah, I'm streaming every day. So, you can come see me on Twitch and just ask me any question. And uh, we can kind of have a conversation th th then as well. Where I can kind of try answer your questions to your question in real time. So... Hope you got help, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one or my stream. Take care.